Well, good morning, everybody. Welcome to worship here at Lakewood United Methodist Church. My name is Roy Beth Kelly. I'm one of the pastors here along with Reverend Todd Vick. We hope that you will um, take some time this morning to fill out your Connect card that's attached to your bulletin. If you will just let us know that you're here, this is also a great way for us to connect with you, to pray for you, as well as to connect you with a way to serve or a small group to study or learn. So we hope that you'll fill that out and just tear it off and drop it in the collection plate as it comes along um, through the service. Today we are continuing our sermon series on the book of Luke called The Gospel of Nobodies, and I know Know that you're going to enjoy um, hearing this wonderful scripture from Luke chapter 8. Um, rather than doing a responsive call to worship, let us pray as we begin our worship. Holy and everlasting God, we come to you this day and we give you our burdens and cares. We pray that you would take these burdens from us and ease our souls as we worship. We come to you this day with fear and uncertainty about the future. We pray that you would calm our fears and help us to place our trust in you. We come this day to worship you, O God, recognizing that your love is abundant. We come to praise you, O God, recognizing your salvation, recognizing that you are the one who watches over us always. Amen. Would you please stand as we sing our opening hymn, Give to the Winds Thy Fears. It's number 129. 129. Let us affirm our faith with the Apostles' Creed, number 881. I believe in God the Father, Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. 
I invite you into a time of prayer to catch your breath and to breathe in the presence of the Holy Spirit in this place and to name your concerns before God. Let us pray. For all the blessings of this life, we give you thanks, Creator God. For families and friends, for co-workers and neighbors and strangers who nurture us, that the love of God may grow within, that your love, your word, like a seed, may grow to produce in us good fruit. May your love grow in us. For the leaders of nations and cities, we pray this day, that they may lead with strong hearts and gentle hands and generous spirits, that they might have compassion and mercy, wisdom and grace. May they reflect your will guiding their actions and decisions. May your love grow in us. Holy One, this day we come to pray for those who serve in harm's way, for those who live in dangerous places, those who live in areas of war and strife, those who live in fear, Especially, we pray for the people of Ukraine. We pray for people affected by violence everywhere, including our own state, lifting up those in Dumas. We pray for those who worry about employment and bills and food and struggle just to find dignity in life. May your grace bring peace and safety to all people. May your love grow in us. Powerful God, we come before you this day to pray for those who suffer from any illness or disease of mind, of body, or spirit. Especially we name those who suffer from depression, anxiety, and mental health issues. We pray for those who struggle with addiction Restore these, O oh God, and all those we carry in our hearts to fullness of health, that kind of health as only you can bring. May your mercy shower each of us with healing mercy and love. May your love grow in us. Everlasting God, we pray for those who are dying and for those who have died. Send forth your comforting love. Give solace to those who mourn. Console those who grieve. May your grace surround us like a mantle upon our heads, a shawl upon our shoulders, a hand to hold our hand. May your love grow in us. And we come this morning to bow before you to honor you and to pray together the prayer that Christ taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
so nice to have the choir back singing an anthem. That was a beautiful anthem. Thank you very much for that. Canon and Dee was uh, the processional for our wedding, and so I really enjoyed that. Thank you very much. Um, let us pray. Gracious and loving God, we come before you today to hear your word proclaimed to be equipped to be your disciples in the world. So, Father, open our hearts and our minds. Open our ears that we may hear your word, that we may put it into practice in our lives. Father, speak through me and in spite of me, and, Lord, may the meditations of all of our hearts be pleasing unto you. In your holy name we pray. Amen. When I was in high school, we had a demonstration in school one day by the power team. Anybody heard of, seen the power team? No? Okay. All right. The power team is a Christian performance group of elite athletes that are bodybuilders. Think of big guys, you know? And one of their acts is that they would bind themselves up in chains, and then they would break free from those chains. This group would go all over the country performing and putting on talks in schools and for businesses and in churches. And depending on the location of their event, they would use this illustration of breaking through the chains to make a point. And when they were in a place where it was allowed, that point was that Christ can break the chains that bind us in our lives. Today, in our text from Luke, we meet a man who had been physically chained, much like the power team chains themselves. However, the demons that were within him overwhelmed those physical chains, and they drove him to the local cemetery. We're going to turn now to Luke chapter 8, beginning in verse 26 through 39, so you can follow along with me in your Bible or on the screen. Then they arrived at the country of the Gerasenes which is opposite Galilee. As he stepped out on land, a man of the city who had demons met him. And for a long time he had worn no clothes, and he had not lived in a house but in the tombs. When he saw Jesus, he fell down before him and shouted at the top of his voice, What have you to do with me, Jesus, Son of the Most High God? I beg you, do not torment me. For Jesus had commanded the unclean spirit to come out of the man. For many times it had seized him. He was kept under guard and bound with chains and shackles, but he would break those bonds and be driven by the demon into the winds. Jesus then asked him, What is your name? And he said, Legion. For many demons had entered him. They begged him not to order them to go back into the abyss. Now there on the hillside, a large herd of swine was feeding, and the demons begged Jesus to let them enter these. So he gave them permission, and the demons came out of the man and entered the swine, and the herd rushed down the steep bank and into the lake and was drowned. When the swine herders saw what had happened, they ran off and told it in the city and in the country. Then people came out to see what had happened, and when they came to Jesus, they found the man from whom the demons had gone, sitting at the feet of Jesus, clothed and in his right mind, and they were afraid. Those who had seen it told them how the one who had been possessed by demons had been healed, and then all the people of the surrounding country of the Gerasenes asked Jesus to leave them, but they were seized with great fear. So he got into the boat and returned. The man for whom the demons had gone begged that he might be with him. But Jesus sent him away, saying, Return to your home and declare how much God has done for you. So he went away, proclaiming throughout the city how much Jesus had done for him. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Here in chapter 8, Luke is continuing to demonstrate who Jesus is. Prior to this passage, Jesus has healed a paralyzed man and many others, as we talked about last week. He's calmed the raging sea when he and the apostles were crossing over in the middle of the night. 
These demonstrations proved that Jesus had power and authority over the physical world. This passage here in chapter 8 is a demonstration of Christ's power over the spiritual world as he cast out demons. We're talking about the nobodies during this season of Lent as we read through the Gospel of Luke. And in this narrative, we have a major nobody and potential other nobodies. Let's try to place ourselves in the midst of this story and truly understand this from first century eyes. Jesus and the apostles, all good Jewish guys, are crossing the sea into Gentile land. And their first encounter immediately after getting off the boat is a demon-possessed man and a herd of pigs. Now from what we know of Jewish culture and religious law, these three things, Gentiles, demon-possessed man, and pigs, were enough to make them unclean for decades and nobodies themselves. And then there is the demon-possessed man himself. He is a nobody. Not just because he is possessed, but because his possession is so severe that he cannot be controlled. The text alludes to the fact that at one time he lived among the people. But at one point he became too much for the people to handle. So they bound him up in chains and they vanished him to the cemetery outside of town. Seminary may have been more appropriate than cemetery, right? Either one. The cemetery outside of town. His possession by the demons is so strong that he broke those chains. And it's caused him to go mad to the point where he feels it's best to go without clothing. Are you there? Can you picture it? Now these demons that... Jesus is dealing with may or may not be something that today we would refer to as a mental or physical health issue. Many times when people would behave in certain ways, that behavior in ancient times was classified as demons because they didn't have our modern understanding of mental health. However, I have read and studied enough about the spiritual realm to believe that there are also spiritual afflictions among us in the times of the Bible and now. So regardless of whether this is a modern day mental illness or a true spiritual demon, there are some things that we can learn from this, as I believe both can act similarly at times. First, Jesus addresses the demon by name, and then he says their name is Legion meaning many. A legion during the time was also the basic Roman military unit, and it consisted of about five to 6,000 soldiers. It was considered to be the best of the best. If we were to put this in modern terms, think of it as being maybe the Marines. Mental, physical, and spiritual afflictions can be strong and numerous. The demons also began to negotiate with Jesus as he's about to cast them out. The demons don't want to go to hell or the abyss. They don't like it there. I find this interesting, that a spiritual force of evil doesn't want to go to the most evil place that we can think of. Primary here is the negotiation. Our mental and spiritual afflictions negotiate. And I'm sure we've all heard these negotiations. For the alcoholic, it sounds something like, just one more drink won't hurt. For the depressed, it's a whisper saying that it's always going to be like this. For those who are resentful, the demon focuses attention on all the wrong done to the person. Negotiations that lead us to hurt ourselves or others as we are led down a path of destruction. Ultimately, Jesus in this narrative shows great concern for the mentally and the spiritually afflicted as he shows the power that he has over demons and brings healing to this man in the graveyard, restoring him to the community as the townspeople saw him dressed and in his right mind once again. 
there are many among us who are just like the Gerasene demoniac. Those counted as nobodies because of their mental illness or spiritual affliction. According to the National Institute of Mental Health, as of 2020, one out of five Americans live with a mental illness. And unfortunately, still today, mental illness is stigmatized and not given the attention it should as any other form of illness. The other side of this, the flip coin, is the spiritual afflictions or evil demons. And the Vatican doesn't keep official record on the number of exorcisms they perform. Exorcisms being the ritual used in the church to remove a spiritual demon from possessing an individual. However, in 2018, Father Vincent Lampert, the official exorcist for the Archdiocese of Indianapolis, said in an article in The Atlantic that he had received over 1,700 requests for exorcisms. In 2011, there were 15 known official exorcists of the Catholic Church, and in 2018, that number had risen to 100. So whether one suffers from mental illness or spiritual affliction, they are the nobodies of our societies. The people that we would just rather not deal with and push out to the edge of town. Living in fear, cast out from the normal interactions of our society. We, like Jesus, should care for the mentally and spiritually afflicted. Just as we rip a hole in a roof to get the sick and the developmentally disabled to Christ, so too should we do all in our power to bring those bound by chains from Satan or bound up of their own doing to the foot of the cross where Jesus can help them to find deliverance. We should pray for and with them. We should advocate for mental health We should proclaim that it is okay to not be okay. We should support recovery and support groups. We should do all in our power to reject all forms of evil in our world. We should remember daily that there is a real force of spiritual darkness present in our world. And we should do all that we can to reject it as we proclaimed we would do at our baptism or our profession of faith, or our confirmation into the church. This week, and into the future, pay close attention for how you can serve as God's agents of love and grace to those who are mentally and spiritually afflicted. Be their personal power team, and help them break the chains that bind through the power of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. come to the point in our service where we collect our gifts of tithes and offerings. And as we do, I want to remind you, you can give by texting the word Lakewood to the number 73256 or by going to our website, expandingthelight.org and giving that way. You may also mail your check into us here at the church or place it in the offering plate for those of you in attendance here today. The ushers will please come forward.
are collecting Easter candy. There's an announcement about that in your bulletin. We need you to bring 6 to 12 Easter eggs filled with small toys or individually wrapped candy, and you can place those in any of the blue bins that you'll see around the church or in the office. 
Also, Easter lilies are on sale, and there's a QR code that you can scan with your smartphone there or come by the office or call us if you'd like to order those. And then we have got a special children's musical, um, Judge Julie Truly, in the case of the hole in the roof or something like that. Holy Roof. I think you all know what that's about. We should. We all got that message last week. And that is April 3rd, is that right? April 3rd is when that will be here in the sanctuary. You won't want to miss that. I promise you it's going to be a treat. So now as you go out into your mission field, receive this benediction. Go forth to expand the light as you seek, share, and serve God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you.